This afternoon, Barbie's invited her friends, Christy, PJ, and Stacy, over to play television talk show. Welcome to the Barbie Hour. And here's Barbie. Hi, I'm Barbie. Christy Poe. Hey, girlfriend. Hello doll fans and welcome back to Beauty Inside a Box. I have moved back to my parents' house for a little bit, so if you've been watching my channel for a really long time you may recognise my old bedroom. I'm back, we're back here, we're back filming here. The acoustics are much better in this room, I have noticed that. Because I was moving, that's why I didn't manage to find time to film a video last week, but I am super excited to be back and today we are talking about one of my favourite Barbie characters. Christy! I love Christy, especially this doll. Like, this is one of my favourite Christy dolls. She's so cool. This has become a bit of a series on my channel, talking about Barbie's friends and her boyfriend Ken, and even the creator of Barbie, Ruth Handler. So make sure you check out the other videos in this series, and if you love dolls and Barbie as much as I do, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check me out on Instagram and TikTok. But anyway, let's talk about Christy. Now, Christy was first introduced into the Barbie line as one of Barbie's friends in 1968. And, spoiler alert, she sadly disappeared in around 2009, with only a couple brief appearances since then. Her surname is sometimes said to be O'Neill. Christy O'Neill. Christy is, of course, most notable for being Barbie's first black friend, her first African-American friend. Now, Christy is commonly confused with Black Barbie, and I can see why, because they often share the same face mould, but Black Barbie and Christy are two entirely different entities. We'll be going into a little bit more detail about that in a bit, but maybe one day I'll make a whole video about Black Barbie as well. Now, I used to love Christy when I was a kid. I had loads of Christy dolls. One of my favourites was, like, a flying butterfly Christy. Um, she had like a green dress, it, she, was, she was stunning. It is so important for companies like Mattel to represent people from loads of different walks of life equally, so that all children can feel represented, but also so that kids can be exposed to different kinds of beauty. Christy and Black Barbie have sometimes been criticised for upholding Eurocentric beauty standards, and for quite often taking a back seat to the white Barbie dolls. These criticisms are pretty valid. I feel like Mattel and Barbie have come a long way and are doing a lot better at representing different races and cultures, but this is obviously an ever-evolving conversation and there's always more progress to be made. Now, obviously, I don't belong to the groups which Christy is trying to represent, so I really encourage you to seek out content on YouTube and on TikTok created by black creators if you want a more genuine view on the subject of representation in the Barbie line. But today's video is just going to be some fun looking over the history of Christy. Mattel had made attempts to add some more diversity to the Barbie line before Christy. Some of these attempts were more successful than others. Before we can properly dive into the history of Christy, uh, let's quickly talk about the black dolls that led up to her creation. In 1966, Mattel introduced Barbie's mod -urn cousin, Francie. I feel like I have to say it like Francie, not Francie. Francie. Anyway, she was 11 and a quarter inches tall, which was ever so slightly shorter than Barbie, and quite a lot taller than Skipper, and she really captured the mod fashion trends of the mid-60s, similar to what was being worn on Carnaby Street in London. And in 1967, as part of the twist and turn Barbie line, Mattel introduced a black variant to Francie, which was produced in very small numbers. Unfortunately, this doll had no black features since she used the exact same face mould and body mould as the original Caucasian Francie doll. This is a bit of an issue that would occur quite often with Black Barbies and with Christie as well. The doll was known by a name that is quite derogatory and offensive, and I'm not going to repeat on this channel. The name isn't used on the box, since the doll actually had pretty much the exact same packaging as the white Francie doll but the name was used in advertisements and catalogues. It is so hot in this room. This next bit is so stupid and I actually can't believe this happened, but anyway. Apparently, due to complaints 
about a black doll being considered Barbie's cousin. The doll was discontinued after the second version in 1968. And what's even more ridiculous is that she wasn't even referred to as Barbie's cousin on the box, unlike the white doll, or in any marketing material. Now, I couldn't find any proper evidence of this, but if it's true then it's absolutely disgusting, of course. Because they were only made for such a short time and in such low numbers, the black Francie dolls are actually incredibly rare and very expensive online. <laughs> now, possibly to replace Black Francie, also in 1968, Christie was introduced as part of the talking Barbie line. The dolls had like a pull string on the back of their neck which would allow them to talk, similar to Woody in Toy Story. <laughs> Christie was the first black doll in the Barbie line to have a unique face mould made especially for her. And interestingly enough, the face mould is marked on the back with the year 1965, which means that this doll was in the works before Black Francie even came out. Maybe they were just like testing the water with Black Francie? Anyway. In some early promotional images, Christy is actually wearing the exact same outfit as Barbie, but the doll was released in a green version. A talking Julia doll from the hit TV show also called Julia, which ran from 1968 to 1971, was released at the exact same time. She was one of the first ever celebrity Barbie dolls, and she shared the same face mould as Christy. Christy had a cute black bob, which would slowly turn red over time with age, so many vintage Christy dolls that you might see online often appear to have red hair. Dolls that manage to keep their original black hair are very rare and very expensive. Christie was released right at the end of the civil rights movement and was a great success. In 1970, a new version of Talking Christie was released alongside Brad, Christie's boyfriend. <laughs> Talking Brad would even say the phrase, Christie's the greatest. Aww, that's so cute. A twist and turn, Christie was released in 1970 with a waist that moved in a way that kind of made it look like she was dancing. In 1971, live action Christy was released with the most psychedelic 70s outfit you've ever seen. <laughs> I actually love this outfit, I want to wear it to a festival. This doll strangely used Midge's face mould. Gosh, everyone was stealing Midge's face around this time. In 1973, Malibu Christy was released once again with her original face mould. In 1975, Malibu Christie's swimsuit was changed to yellow. And I just want to say that I really feel like yellow is Christie's colour, you know? She just looks great in yellow. Also in 1975, Christie and Brad were briefly replaced with Cara and Curtis for the lines Free Moving Barbie, Ballerina Barbie, and Quick Curl Barbie. But this was only for one year and then suddenly Christie and Brad were back. I don't know what was going on with Cara and Curtis. Maybe Christy and Barbie, like, had an argument, so she was hanging out with different people <laughs> for the time being. In 1976, Superstar Christy was released alongside Barbie and Ken. This doll had a beautiful yellow dress, but frustratingly, once again, had the exact same face mould as Barbie. Okay, at this point in our story, I'm gonna take a really quick detour to talk about Kitty Black Perkins, a really important figure in the world of black dolls. Kitty was born around 1947 and grew up in a racially segregated part of South Carolina. She later moved to LA. There, in 1971, she got her associate's degree in fashion design. She worked for six years making children's fashion before responding to a blind classified ad to work as a designer for Mattel. Now, Kitty had never owned a Barbie of her own before, so before the job interview, she went to Toys R Us and she bought a Barbie to prepare for the interview. When I came for the interview, I was given a, a Barbie doll and I was asked to take it home to dress. And I did. I was told to make one outfit. Well, I made three. And it was so much fun uh, that I just decided that this is what I have to do. I can't, I cannot go back to the fashion industry. And I didn't. Kitty was the first ever black designer employed by Mattel, and she became principal designer for Barbie in 1978. And when she was in a position to hire, she hired two more black designers to work with her. In 1980, Kitty Black Perkins was asked to design the first ever black Barbie. Kitty addressed a lot of the issues that people had had with previous black dolls. She was so different 
from Barbie, which was the intent because I wanted her to have her own personality. I gave her a short natural. Uh, I gave her a slim silhouette instead of the full ball gown that Barbie usually had. Um, I gave her, um, she was mainly in primary colors instead of the fantasy pinks and blues and that kind of thing. She drew a lot of inspiration from music and TV stars like Diana Ross. The box said, she's black, she's beautiful, she's dynamite. We need to bring back saying dynamite. Like, I love the word dynamite. She's so dynamite. Sadly, this doll didn't get her own face mold and just used the Steffi face mold, which is still a very cute face mold, to be fair. Kitty also said she was nervous about giving the doll short natural hair, but the doll was a massive success. And this doll would kind of pave the way for where Barbie is now with Brooklyn Barbie and Malibu Barbie. Funnily enough, in Europe, which is where I'm from, the doll was actually called Christy. So the Black Barbie was just a Christy doll, which would explain why there's some confusion between the two of them. Christy would continue to use the Steffi face mold all the way up until 1987. In 1982, Brad was briefly renamed to Ken for the Sensations Barbie line. That must have been really confusing for Barbie and Christy. Sensations Ken did have great rooted hair. In 1987, Mattel released the California Barbie line which not only introduced a brand new face mold for Christy, a face mold which was specifically for her, but this line also reintroduced Midge and introduced Teresa for the first time. This was like a really important moment in Barbie history. Maybe I'll make a video about Teresa next. <laughs> also in 1987, Christy got a brand new boyfriend introduced in the Island Fun line. His name was Steven. Hi Steven. <laughs> Through the late 80s and the early 90s, Christy changed very little. She often wore very similar outfits to Barbie, but with different colours like orange or yellow. She would often have the same hair texture as Barbie too. In 1995, Christy was given the Shani face mould. Mattel would now go back and forth between using the original Christy face mould and the Shani face mould to represent Christy. Now, Shani. Shani was the main character of a Barbie spin-off line, which was also created by Kitty Black Perkins. The line was focused on black beauty, and the line was quite successful, but sadly short-lived. Shani would also make occasional appearances in the Barbie line. For example, she replaced Christy in the Sun Jewels line. She was probably trying to stop Christy from stealing her face mold. In 1996, working out Christy had an articulated body. Also in 1996, starting in the Splash and Color line, Steven would start to use the Jamal face mold. Jamal was another character from the marvelous world of Shani. In 1998, Butterfly Art Christy used the Nichelle face mold. Nichelle was another character from the marvelous world of Shani. The Nichelle face mold is this one right here. Also in 1998, Flip and Dive Christy would use the Asher face mold. And Asher was, you guessed it, another character from the marvelous world of Shani. I'm very nostalgic for that face mold. I have a lot of dolls with the Asher face mold. I'm pretty sure it's this one here. I just want to make a quick shout out to Very Velvet Christy. She was one of the first ever Christy dolls I ever got and I absolutely love her. Her outfit is so extravagant and extra. There were so many Christy dolls in 1999 which I really loved. My friend had Jewel Girl Christy and I was so jealous. She had this like flexy rubbery waist. Similar to this Jam and Glam Christy here. It's so great, I love this waist. In 2000, the Surf City line was introduced and Christy was given the new standard Barbie body mold, which featured a belly button for the first time. In 2003, Kitty Black Perkins retired from working for Mattel. She was an incredibly vibrant and talented designer and she made such a massive impact on the doll industry. In 2003, Callie Girl Steven was the first time Steven was given rooted hair, although in Europe, he had already had rooted hair because a lot of the previously named Black Ken dolls were marked as being Steven in Europe. Also in 2003, Christy got a weird bendable body for the Dance and Flex line. I used to have this doll and she was kind of weird. She looked like she had no bones. <laughs> 
Christy also became a mermaid for the first time, and I absolutely love this doll. Black Barbie had previously been a mermaid, but Christy had never. Here are some of my favourite Christy dolls from the mid-2000s. Sadly, in 2006, Christy was randomly replaced with Nikki. No one knows why Mattel decided to do this. Nikki and Christy look exactly the same, they use the same face mould. And Nikki still appears in Barbie media to this day, but where's Christy? What, what did they do to Christy? We miss Christy. Steven somehow managed to stay in the line up until 2010 when he appeared in the Bath Play Fun line. What a terrible name for a doll line. Bath Play Fun. Anyway. In 2015, Christy appeared in the Barbie movie, Barbie and Her Sisters in The Great Puppy Adventure. That is a long title, anyway. In the film, Barbie goes to her grandma's house, which is in her childhood town of Willows, Wisconsin. While she's there, she meets up with her old friend Christy. Interestingly, their friendship was really giving, like, romance vibes. Yes, I'll meet you at the ticket booth. <laughs> you know it. Okay, you too. <laughs> no, you hang up first. I have to say, I am really not a fan of this depiction of Christy. Also, the film was super cringe. Christy would randomly appear once in 2016 in an exercise fun playset. Her name wasn't written on the box anywhere, but her name was mentioned as being Christy in catalogues. Since then, Mattel has made loads of collector dolls and reproductions of classic Christie dolls. Most recently, they released a doll which celebrated Christie's 55th anniversary. So there we have it, doll fans. I spoke about the full history of Christie. And you know what? I love Christie. She deserves a comeback to the Barbie line. She is such an icon. Please let me know in the comments what you guys think of Christy. Also don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you're new here. Also don't forget to check me out on Instagram and TikTok and watch some more of my videos. And I will see you real soon, doll fans. Bye. <laughs>